The Amnesty International is dissatisfied with the dethronement of the former Amy of Kano, Mohammed Sanusi II. In a series of tweets on Tuesday, the group faulted the decision to banish the former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, after he was dethroned. Amnesty International called on Nigerian authorities to respect the human rights of former Emil Kano, his right to dignity, freedom of expression, and freedom of movement. According to the group, restricting sanity and placing him incommunicado is against human rights as protected under the Nigerian Constitution and International Human Rights Law. It therefore asks the authorities to ensure they respect and protect the fundamental human rights of the former emir in accordance to the rule of law. And joining me live in the studio to discuss this further is legal practitioner Liberos Oshoma. Thank you for staying with us on News on the Hour. Definitely. Now, some have said the removal of Emil, um, now ex, um, now ex, Sanusi is was inevitable, and that it was it was long time coming. That it was it was seen the the the, the hand the handwriting was on the wall. Would you yeah. agree with this? Yes, I completely agree. For, um, and that's why, for me, in the first place, uh, before we um, the 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 throne Emma, the former Emir. Um, I wouldn't have accepted, even though he had said that he was his lifelong ambition to ascend the throne of uh, his um, forefathers. Yes. Um, but he also should have understand that, uh, uh, you know, um, against um, the kind of person he is, the vociferous uh, kind of um, person that he is, the throne, you know, are for people in Nigeria especially, you know, even worldwide, are for reticent people. You know, and then um, when he took on that garb of consistently criticizing the Northern institution, yes. which he was part of and meant to protect, you know, and then the moment, you know, um, the government of the day didn't find it funny, you know, a lot of people saw it coming. Coupled with the fact that, you know, we saw all the skimmings, all the, you know, kangaroo, you know, set up arrangement and committees set up by the state government and the state house of assembly and eventually you know his detriment for his subordination in subordination quote and unquote yes. nowhere defined and you know uh, every discerning mind you know saw this coming especially also when he was if you remember when he was um, um i think um um working in the bank in the union bank then in uba uh, as um, i think general manager wrote northern region um, the the state government in Kano specifically stopped doing business with that bank as a result of his criticism of the activities of the then governor, um, who now is um, is his ally, his friend. Yes. Uh, that when he even called the government house at Jinomoto government house, and um, that you know why would the governor in the midst of poverty spend seven hundred million then building a government house? You know, so he's knowing the kind of person he is. And also knowing what the throne entails in Nigeria, uh, I, I, I think he ought to have seen it coming. Now, now, to some people, it was pretty much a surprise that the AMEC could be de deposed in, in such a manner. So maybe you want to help us understand the, the hierarchical system of power when it comes to traditional rulers in the north. And um, how do they come into power? Yeah, basically, there's no, no constitutional powers you know, provided for the AMEC in, in our laws, in our constitution. Uh, the powers of the Emir, Emir are subsumed under the local government laws. And so that's why you find out that an Emir is controlled by a local government chairman, or at best, you know, a commissioner for, for local government and chief tenancy affair, you know, including others in the south. And they, but because of the nature and the command, that the, the respect that they command, so you find out that some kingdoms also, you know, depending on also the person occupying that position, yes. the respect you know, that is accorded that throne. This varies depending on, 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 on the area. And then, but because of the fact that they are not um, constitutionally provided for, apart from being mere advisory to a governor, you know, so, and then playing the role of um, other statesmen who should advise, and the advice should not be made public, and also should not double into politics. Yes then that position, you know, is a very tricky and dicey one. And we have seen in Nigeria many emirs and obas dethroned for dabbling into politics, for mendling in political affairs. And so if you remember in 2015, when the former president, Gulag Jonathan, went to campaign, went to visit the Awujale of Jebuland, Oba Sikiru Adetona, the Oba said, look, as the king of Jebuland, I cannot be seen to be endorsing a candidate because all of you as you know, my subject. Yes. And um, that's, that's the role 
of you know an emir okay. too. And so in the last election, when it was presumed that um, the former emir was you know tacitly you know endorsing a candidate, so they saw him as being political, even though it can be argued that uh, condemning you know an act you know uh, that though it is alien cannot be termed to be political but all of that yeah. in the past now. now now we understand that being exiled is is actually um has been a part of a tradition when when an emir or an oba is, is dethroned but many people argue the fact this is the 21st century yeah. should this still hold sway yeah, even not the at times all. we're in not at all yeah. because um this was um this was a tradition that um, was practiced before we had a mo modern constitutional democracy. It was a tradition also that the colonial masters enjoyed. Um, to, uh, uh, when an uh, Oba is dethroned, you know, on the ground that you cannot have two captains in one ship, yes. you know, he's sent on exile. And also because you still have people who are loyal to him so that there won't be, you know, crisis and, um, and division within the kingdom. Mm. So he's sent on, an, on exile you know, to another kingdom when he's treated, you know, as a, a commoner. Uh, but in this day, when you have constitutional democracy, you know, every right, individual right yes. of a Nigerian, be it Oba, be it a commoner, are governed by the provisions of the law. And so to that extent, nobody, not even a governor, as even heard by the Court of Appeal in um, uh, Kebbi State Government against uh, Mustafa Jokolo, that not even a governor had the right to limit the powers of anybody as prescribed in section 35, 40, and 41, which is the same thing that they are doing to Sanusi right. now. Interesting happening today. Um, the deposed Amir today was appointed as the chancellor by the uh, governor of Kaduna State as the chancellor of uh, Kaduna State University. How, how do you see this panel? I, I think um, it's um, more of a statement from the Kaduna State government, mm. who has been his close friend and um, ally. If you remember, some of the criticism that, you know, even sparked the crisis were made at the birthday of uh, the Cardinal State yes. uh, Governor. And um, uh, so I think this is uh, more of a statement endorsing, you know, the fact that um, the uh, deposed Emir remains a hero, remains a shining star in, you know, and it, that it is not everybody in APC that, you know, endorses the action of the Governor of Kano State. And so the very, the next state to Kano, which is Kaduna, also now, apart from appointing him into the Export Promotion Council, also made him a chancellor. Okay. These are, you know, pointers to the fact that, look, we all do not subscribe to the fact that uh, you shouldn't be criticizing or doing what you're doing. We also believe in your, your influence, your knowledge, and your ability to make changes. And, and those, those now, just, just before I let you go, what is to become of hopes of reformation of some of the, of the less progressive practices that seem to have impov impoverished the people? Um, I don't see, that's why the politicians are not happy. That's why they feel, look, like as anemia, you should be seen and, you know, not heard. And, and so, because these are practices that have consistently held not only the not, not a part of Nigeria now, but the entire country yes. where people are consistently impoverished. And when you give them peanuts, you want them to appreciate in you for giving them what ordinarily is supposed to be theirs. Yes. And um, anybody that raises his voice against such practice, it's, you know, tagged either enemy of the state or viewed from the point of view of, oh, look, you don't want, you know, us to continually live our life. That's why for me, I think that um, people like us, it will be very difficult for us to go into politics. Our position is clearly cut out. Consistently, you know, be a bridge builder and opinion moder. Yes. Because the moment you want to come into politics, they believe that you want to change the status quo or you want to ascend the throne, and such opportunities, such positions are either to silence you, you know, or if you want to be, be vociferous as you were before you ascended the throne, then you will get such treatment. So that's why the status quo will always be maintained. All right, legal Except practitioner. Except change, uh, uh, you know, our political, you know, class. The Bureau of Social thank you for joining us on News on the Hour and always for your in-depth contribution. Always my pleasure.